Nama Shivaya. Namaste everyone. This is Asanist Fire. I'm back here on the way of Dharma. Today we'll be addressing a very, very interesting topic. The topic of different entities and I'll also be explaining to you the different types of entities that we have in African or South African spirituality. So before we go even further, I'd like to welcome those of you who are new on the way of Dharma. Please subscribe. Don't forget to like if you like the content from the way of Dharma and share to your loved ones to make sure that you spread the word. Make sure you are not in ignorance. And I'd like to thank you for your support. Om Namah Shivaya. So this is Asanist Fire. I'm the guy Asanist Fire. And today I'll be addressing you on a very interesting topic of spirits. But before we go even further, let me start and take you back, 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 back. We're back. So before everyone comes into occultism and spirituality, you come from a sort of background of ignorance it might be christianity it might be atheism or something else basically so in that something else that we were taught we were either taught that god the most high is the only entity that has power or the only living entity that is perceivable basically and then in atheism we are told that science and whatever that we see in the flesh is the only thing that's in existence basically this was flawed and we were misled to a very very great degree about this subject there's different worlds within the earthly world and there's even higher worlds with uh, which are of a much subtler nature so now we'll be talking about some of these worlds but mainly we'll be focusing on the different types of entities so i have i hope you listen and pay attention today i was speaking with my friend the one that i was talking about the one who was saying who introduced me to that stream that i used to go and take spiritual baths so this guy is not an initiate in the manner of being initiated by a traditional healer or rather he wasn't initiated into south african spirituality with an orthodox way he was rather initiated mostly self-initiated just like i was self-initiated into this spiritual path so we were talking today and i was telling him about my i was basically reacting to that video that I was speaking about, the one where we have the snake that shape shifts, basically. So he told me a lot of things that were shocking and they sounded very, very bizarre. So I was so shocked like I was when I was watching that video. So going back to the backgrounds that we have, we are taught that whatever that we perceive only with our two eyes, only that, ab that which abides with the scientific laws and the laws of the material basically is what we, 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 we have or we, is what we are limited to basically. This is false. This is false. I think this is a narrative that was pushed by because I'm sorry guys, I'm not coming across as racist okay there's those guys that the white supremacists those are the ones that i know for sure okay the elite those guys are pushing a narrative that a, a narrative in the public that we are scientific beings and we should abide to the laws of science and whatever that can't be perceived or proven by physical means and calculated by physical instruments doesn't exist basically this narrative was pushed because some of these entities that you that you might come that you that that you might come across they can give you power to a point whereby you surpass their current ruling power 
or power structure. I was speaking on the group chat. No, it wasn't. Was it on a group chat? Yeah, no, it, it was with my friend, uh, a guy from India. He doesn't like me to mention his name. So this guy was telling me about the most dangerous thing. Basically, among the most dangerous thing or the most dangerous being, he mentioned that the Aghori, those are the ones that we should fear. Those are the ones that have power, basically. The Aghori, what is the Aghori? Somebody who, okay, in India, it's a tradition of people that renounce and live according to the way of Shiva, basically. But Aghori in the terms of the universal aspect of the Aghori is somebody who has psychic powers, basically. A human that has supernatural powers that would be likened to it. A Swami, a master of mind, a master of all the elements, basically. Those, as he says, are the ones that we should be afraid of. Okay. Why does he say so? Talking today with my friend, he says that the we were once we were once having that power to conjure these creatures at will and make them to perform our will basically we had the power to kill people in like a few seconds now this guys is not something superstitious and I, I i wouldn't love to lose some of you that subscribe to this channel because of the things that i'm speaking of right now they might sound like madness or superstition or something that irritates you basically but please understand this is real so we were able at a certain point to kill a person like this just conjure something and then kill them fast we had so much power basically you see the power that we see in these beings. Imagine a human being having that power, man. Imagine a human being having that power. Imagine a human being being equivalent to that creature and even having much more power because of the free will that he has, the hierarchy in rank that he has over those creatures. Because basically in our fallen state, we still have that power. You understand there's something that had to happen to all the natives around the world that was spiritual i'd like to think to make us become so low 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 because in that state of power we could transform and uh, use any element as we desire we would be able to use supernatural powers as we desire so a european coming with bullets wouldn't even do anything it wouldn't they wouldn't even be able to to, to fire those bullets basically so um before we okay i'd like to refer okay i'll, I'll do it later okay so something had to happen to take us to this low state Basically, guys, any superpower that you can imagine that you see in the Marvel comics, this was the human being at its highest state, basically. We had such power. So, when we were speaking, he also mentioned the fact that uh, these elemental spirits are actually the ones that build this earth and the, they are the ones that are in charge of earthly affairs and they govern the earth and they also protect the earth from malicious entities basically so these people are in earthly affairs they are near the earth basically when i came into spirituality you know the way everything is tried to the, 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 you know the, the the way everything in spirituality and occultism especially western occultism everything is categorized or rather it is explained in terms and over logicalized to a point whereby you can see something which is powerful 
as something folly and, and, and little basically. So when you talk of thought forms, sevitas, and all those things, you think of a sevita being something, a product of some weak person's mind, basically, having no power, having no supernatural powers, just there to act like a thought going out into the universe and then bringing back things to you, basically. That's what you picture a thought form as, basically. And then when they explain spirits such as elementals, they forget the supernatural side of it, the scary side of it, the superstitious side of it, because of this over-logicalization of spiritual terms and spiritual concepts. I'm here to tell you guys that these elemental beings, these are very, very dangerous. They can change shape and form at will, and they can perform miracles that seem alien to the human eye, basically. So, approach with caution, okay? Approach with caution. So now, the different types of entities. We have demons, okay? Those lower spirits. And then we have human beings, okay? Just above human beings, they say it is the jinn. The jinn are said to be spirits of nature, basically. So the jinn, the fairies, the yakshini, yakshasa, and all those elemental spirits are basically vibrating on the same plane, just above those spirits and entities. We have what? We have the angels. Above the angels, we have the devas and devatas, okay? Which are God forms, basically. I'd like to say that they are God forms, okay? And then we have above those God forms, we have those forms of Lord Shiva, you know, there's no English equivalent to translate such deities into into english basically there's no english equivalent to translate those words so most often times they are referred to as gods and goddesses but they are much higher they, they, they come even before the the gods and goddesses so I'd, I'd like to go even back to the greek tradition whereby they refer to these beings as titans those are the highest Probably there's a hierarchy that comes even before them. And then there's them, okay? And then you go into infinity till you go back into Godhood. Now the human being, being um, just before the lowest, which are the demons, the human being has potential to actually surpass all these, you understand? So at a certain point in the evolution or in the spiritual affairs, higher beings were actually tricked into taking this physical form by the demigod energy, the false god energy that wanted to rule over us, basically. So we were tricked into being human beings. So, being tricked into being human beings, the elementals, the devas, the devatas, the angels, those guys, I'd like to think, this is my theory on it, I'd like to think before we fell, we had made a pact with these en entities and energies to actually keep some of our memory so that when we inhabit the earth, we would come back to them to seek assistance to raise ourselves, to go back to our original power. So there's a constant battle between these energies and entities that have our memory and knowledge and these ones that tricked us into becoming what we might look like right now into this physical existence. So the human being, 
is just an entity that took form in this thing to basically try to work its way up into infinity basically so that's why we have potential to even go further than your devas and devatas in essentiality and in actuality <laughs> we are <laughs> we are those entities and we have power to go beyond basically so the different types of entities i've spoken of them i'd like to focus more on the elemental plane the fairy plane the earthly spirits plane and all those entities that are in accordance with what i've just mentioned i then went i will upload a picture over the year i then went i then went further to ask him questions about the different types of entities basically so there's snakes the python basically the python that i was referring to is actually a short python it's a young one basically like i th i said it's a baby python I'd, like i said so i talked to him i spoke to him about this he told me that it's a young python guys the young python was doing miracles it was throwing people out of the house and it was changing shape and flying all over the place so if the small python has so much power what about the big python now let's talk about these so there's the small python as he says and there's the bigger python even in the snake kingdom those are en energies of the elements basically there's the snakes of the water snakes of the earth the ones that we are stepping upon basically snakes of the air snakes of the fire basically so these guys in each and every element they have a hierarchy the lesser ones the ones that you would see as pythons that are equivalent to the manifestation of the python that you see all over meaning the the fully grown hu uh, not the human the fully grown animal python is just the starting place of the the hierarchy in the elementals basically in the element realm you go even deeper there's ones that are bigger you know gigantic like the anaconda basically there's ones like that that are really really big you understand those are much higher than the ones that i mentioned before those when they move they have so much power by the way there's a neighbor over here okay i'll talk about the story of the neighbor so the python the python that moves the the big one when it moves it can even flow with your roofs basically your roofs and ceilings that one when it moves and it passes it causes destruction basically wherever it passes the energy is so strong that it it is very very powerful basically so the one that was small can wreak havoc but there's the one that is bigger which is the size of the anaconda the one that you see in the movie the one that that one when it moves it breaks roofs and people's houses it causes damage basically and this is true and there's other ones that are much enormous and huge than that one and then you go further you find that there's what guess what i'm gonna give you five seconds it's in the snake kingdom yes you probably guessed it right there's dragons guys 
there is dragons real life dragons okay i'm not selling you a dream i'm not selling you a superstition guys there's dragons okay dragons the fire breathers okay <laughs> You know these you know the white people they know this stuff the white people they know this stuff <laughs> guys there's dragons it is said that there in limpopo there's a mountain when you've passed by over that mountain via helicopter you can see there's a shining thing just above when you when you look down there's water basically in that mountain and there's a shining thing what is that shining thing it's the water basically inside that water deep in it there's gold as a South African, you might have heard of this, basically. There's gold and there's plenty of gold and, uh, man, basi basically there's wealth over the year. Basically. If you are a South African, you know. And if you come from another place, you know that Africa is rich in gold. South Africa, in particular is rich in gold and it is said that one of the mines of king solomon was actually in south africa but that's just to throw you away from the truth so guys there's gold the dragon that i'm speaking about is said to be guarding the wealth basically white people they did go over there performing scientific experiments they went over there it is said with bulletproof glasses basically bulletproof glasses the ones that they had faith in the most the most powerful glass that you can think of so they went over there in the mountain with an elevator glass okay Going deep into that elevator glass, going under, they were able to actually spot this dragon. They took photos of it, came back up to show the people what they had found, went back in, took some more photos and came back up. On the third attempt, they went back down. And when the elevator came back up, there was no one in that elevator and the glass, the so-called bulletproof glass, was broken and smashed, basically. No one could tell where the people were, went, where the people went. So that's what happened when you actually deal with the dragon. In some place, also in Limpopo, basically, the mountains of Limpopo. They had created, um, basically, they had put a glass underground where there's water, basically. You understand? So they had put a glass where there's water and there's this big, gigantic snake, basically. So this big gigantic snake that last was put there to actually be a tour to a tourist attraction but not a tourist attraction in terms of public tourists basically. If you had somebody of affluence and power, maybe someone from the Vatican or rather one of the mercenaries of the people from the Vatican or rather the rich billionaires if they wanted to come and experience such, they would actually come and see the gigantic snake. So the white people, when they go over there, 
They don't come and tell us. You understand? They reinforce this narrative that there's no such thing. There's, uh, <clears throat> it's superstition and mythology. Guys, it is not superstition and mythology. And I don't know of anyone who could see such things and go back and live a normal life, go to work and go to, to basically deep into the matrix and actually live peacefully. Okay. This makes you question a lot. Some of the things that I question when I look at these things and have these encounters where we actually born to go out and work for someone make money go to university and work for someone how could it be that our purpose on earth could be going out and working for someone you see now what 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 what, what questions arise when you see such things the next question you will ask maybe as a wise person how can i tap into this power how can i gain control of such power when you have such power guys basically there's nothing that they can do on the earthly realm even in the spiritual realm they can't do anything to you basically they can't do anything to you so we are being forced to actually believe this narrative that those things are superstition, those things are mythology. Even when I was a Christian, back way back before going into occultism, mind you, for those that know me and those that would like to say that I wasn't a Christian, I was just a, a person living, basically mind you in 2016 17 i was deep into religion because that was my only hope at that time i had dropped out of school and i had nothing to turn back to all my plans were smashed and i couldn't go back to nothing basically so my only escape was going further into prayer doing declarations and stuff you see this room if the walls could speak they would tell you that i used to walk around my room declaring things saying in jesus name i deserve this and this and that i used to do that i even let me see okay it's those people they are slow basically they are slow i used to do that going around declaring and doing my my yes my declarations basically i declare peace and prosperity in the name of jesus i used to do that i even prayed for this laptop to actually be efficient at forex trading so i'm not a faker my first sexual encounter after about seven years was actually when i initiated into luciferianism so i was also abstaining so please guys don't 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 be telling me that i'm a faker okay this is something for the people that were close to me because saying that i was christian they might say that i was over exaggerating it basically i wasn't that far but I'm not over exaggerating something. Live by the word. That's who I was. So even back in Christianity. I, we used to see these dragons in movies and such things. Horned creatures and all that thing. Even the reptilians basically. The reptilians. The, the, the animal uh, aliens. Which are the grey aliens. The extraterrestrials basically. Now, there's some occultists that would like to say that those extraterrestrials are us and they don't exist outside of us. I'm so sorry because these guys, they can't comprehend 
that we are not living alone and when they will when they see it in the future it will be a shock to them it's even better when you see it in your early occult years because when you see it later in the future i'm sorry you might have to question your practice maybe if you've been a practice a practitioner for 50 years you might have to question all those 50 years so please keep an open mind so when i was in my early christian days i used to have these questions about these entities if they are not real how can someone imagine something they don't know basically how can someone imagine something they don't know the microphone comes from a very earlier version of a microphone you understand the earlier version of it might be a loud hailer you see that intercom thing that you speak through it might be that so they decided to personalize it into a recording thing so everything has its earlier state and it has its raw form so in order to improve something you have to work with a prototype a blueprint something which is already there so how does one imagine a dragon you can imagine a big snake why because there's a snake basically a small snake but then a snake with wings a, a snake that has that thing you can also imagine it with uh, due to what there's those lizards and komodo dragons but those guys they don't have wings so you can also imagine it having wings basically that would be your excuse for saying that, that you can imagine something which is not there but the blueprint of something which is like a dragon would be what would be something physical that you have seen a komodo dragon a lizard basically so you can't imagine something you have not seen or does it or, or you don't know the people that are feeding us these movies of dragons they know what that that they exist in the ancient cultures every ancient culture knows that there's dragons but then the european because they want you to go and work for them they tell you that there's no such thing there's only god come to africa come to south africa there to go to these places that i speak of the rural areas and go to these mountains that i speak of you will get nyamd basically you will get nyamd so yes that's what i wanted to say okay so there's dragons over there in limpopo hmm. further evidence that there's such spiritual things in limpopo guys as the bantu the children of Antu, the children of Anu, basically. We come from, mind you, even the Nigerians, they are the Bantu. <laughs> Every black person, basically, they are the Bantu, the children of Anu. So, don't listen to the white European telling you that the Bantu are, are this, the Ifa people are that, the Ghana people are that, the Moors from uh from morocco are dead the libyans the egyptians are dead we are all the bantu children of anu basically we are one thing so we the bantu the current bantu the southern african dwellers and even those that live in congo i don't know if it's in the south or where kenya you know though no? <laughs> those guys man <laughs> that are called the bantu we have similarities in language all over africa we have similarities in language so that shows that we are one thing so we guys actually come from north east and west africa basically so we then came 
journeyed deep into the south. But there were people over here. Do you know who were, who, who were the people that predate us? You might not like to hear this. The Khoi, the San, the Bushman, the Toa, and the Batswana that I was speaking about. Those guys, they predate the Bantu. So even us, the Basotu, <laughs> we are fairly a new culture, a new tradition. We have a few hundred years old, basically. But we are black people, we are the Bantu, we are everything. But then there's people that predate us, the Khoi and the Sun. Those are ancient people. So we came over here in the south, from the north, the east, and the west, basically. So when we came here in the south, there's a few elders that stayed over there. There by Limpopo. Uh, you, you know, those regions by Limpopo and stuff. Th there were elders that stayed there in the sacred mountains. Those elders had spiritual power and they meditated at that mountain to keep peace. In Africa among the Bantu to protect us from the malefic spirits and malefic energies so they are in constant meditation every day every night sitting in that meditative thing I didn't even know that Africans were meditating prior to home Namah Shivaya we were before there were guys, the Indian guys, they were Africans. Even if you can go now to India, there's a group, a native group called the Jarawa. Those are black, even blacker than me. So those are the first inhabitants of India. So if you come now with your Indian phenotype, Indian face, having the same complexion and, as me and you thinking that you can put me under you I'm sorry to say this but we are one thing and I predate you and you have my genes basically even in Asia the China one they have my genes <laughs> so yes the, anyway let, let's not talk about that because for some reason I feel uncomfortable I think maybe I'm disrespecting, but some of you like to hear this, so I'm not disrespecting anyone. I'm sorry if I disrespect you, but I'm merely stating facts. So we are the Bantu. So those guys are meditating in that mountain uh, at Limpopo, those regions of Limpopo basically. So those are the ones that guard us day and night, guard our peace. Hmm very interesting now where did i get this knowledge of the people that are meditating there's a book by credo motwa a shaman father one who passed away in 20 was it 2020 during the COVID thing let me get the book first to show you the book that i'm talking about the book's name is indaba my children it's a very very lengthy book let me show you. I, it was bought by my girlfriend. Yes, I had a girlfriend at that time. No, it was. Yes, I had a girlfriend at that time. And she knew that I liked occult things when I was a Luciferian. And she actually bought me that book. Jaya Jaya He Mahisha Sura Mardini Ram Yaga Pardini Shaila Sute. Let me come with the book. We're having a very, very nice conversation, guys. Thank you. Might have to wipe the thing. Jaya Jaya He Mahisha Sura Mardini Ramyaga Pardini Shaila Sute. This is the book that I'm talking about. A very lengthy book. If you could just give up the Bible and read this as an African, read this with an open mind, with an unscientific mind, you'll gain a lot, basically. 
So it is in this book that I got the knowledge. Okay. So speaking of the Limpopo place, that's where I discovered that in the book, that's where I discovered that there's elders that are meditating. Hmm. So guys, when we came here in the southern part of Africa, there were leaders that were leading us basically, spiritual person. Hmm. Who is the spiritual person? Lumukanda, the blind immortal one. Om Shanti. This guy was blind and he was immortal. This guy basically comes from where? From way back. So before, they were the Bantu. There was a race of people that inhabited the whole world. They were of red pigment, reddish pigment. So advanced. Being that advanced, they then created a race of slaves, basically. Very dark complexion slaves that were similar in features to the gorilla, the gorilla, the monkeys, basically. So that world was further destroyed to usher into a new world, to usher in a new world, a new race of people. So among that race, a female from that race was actually chosen and then a male leader from the slave race was, choos was chosen. How did they, did they spot the person the, among the slave race who was supposed to father a new generation? The prophecies said that that person would have a crescent moon on their chest as a as a birthmark and then it happened so so the female now this is why it gets confusing now the female of that reddish pigmentation race didn't want to copulate with the, the slave race basically so she ran away from the elders from the divine mother Mother, uh, is it Mother, Mother Universe, basically. She's referred to as Mother Universe. I forgot her name. Is it Agwe? Something like that. So she, re she ran away and then encountered a, a race of people. The frog people. I'd like to say they are the frog people, the reptilians. Very, very wise people. Wise race, basically. She then copulated with that race, which further ushered in a new race, which were the what? The Koi, the Sun, the Bushman. You understand? So that's how ancient those beings, those, those races are. And then, you know, this then you can't run away from it. She finally copulated with the slave guy, slave race guy. And then that's where the Bantu people came from so things happened over time and we were enslaved basically by the Phoenicians okay I, I forgot to, to I forgot that where Lumukanda came the, 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 the time that he came in I think it was during the slave rebellion or he was actually the the guy that copulated with the 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 female of the reddish pigment race i i, I kind of forget maybe lumukanda comes from yes i th yes lumukanda comes from the enslavement by the phoenicians which was when it was long it was long even before the the european the european are actually the 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 third enslavers of our race basically there was the phoenicians then came the arabis the Arabs, and then came the Chinese, and then came the Europeans. So this is the fourth time, basically, the fourth time we are being enslaved by Europeans. 
Okay. So yes, Lumukanda comes from that era of the Phoenicians, basically. So he was blessed with spiritual powers, but then his sight was taken away, his eyesight. Instead, his spiritual eye was open. Very powerful man, very powerful man with spiritual powers, basically. So he lived long. He was cursed with the curse of, immort if, of immortality. Very powerful guy with very powerful spiritual powers. So he was the leader that led us into the southern part of Africa. That guy lived long, basically. Yo, man, you know, you know, you know, man, this is very, very beautiful. Because in the book, Credo Mutua actually was able to. I, I think this guy gotten the, the information download from from channeling basically channeling Lumukanda. The lost immortal one. That guy lived long. So in this book it is said that he 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 lived long throughout many generations and he had so much spiritual power but then he died i think just before yes he he was even there during the first zulu nation basically even before the zulu nation came into being but he was there he was there during the first you know, the first Zulu, basically. Because we were all one thing, and then we separated into Zulu Kosa, and then and later on, the Basotu came into the picture. So, why am I talking about Lumukanda? When we further spoke with my friend, I asked him of another entity. The entity that we are all curious about. about. The entity that I was speaking about when... I was talking about the African snake. And then someone co commented, Damon Slytherin. Gryffindor <laughs> Slytherin. Salazar Slytherin. So this guy commented and he said that the Tokoloshi, the entity that I'm talking about, is actually a goblin. Might be true. Might be true. Now this entity vibrates on the plane of the fairies. And those elementals, basically. It also vibrates on the level of the demon, basically. Some say it vibrates on the level of the demon. Some classify it as an extraterrestrial. Hmm. Now the lost immortal one had the power to actually make this entity, these entities. Okay. Now they describe a method here in this book. Of how these entities were actually created. It's not uh, an instruction whether you can follow and actually create these entities. There's another word for these entities. It's a humo humoninkle, something like that. Humanoid coil, something like that. You know, it's very hard to pronounce that word. I can pronounce mantras, but I can't pronounce that word. Nah, man, that ain't cool. So, yes, that entity. This entity is very, very, very troublesome and mischievous. Okay. Hmm. That is it over there. It is said to have a very big dick, a penis, a penis. It is, said to, it is said to be short. Now in this picture, as you can see, it was captured in Mozambique. The land of... You know, man, I, I keep hearing sounds, man. But it's fine. Om Namah Shivaya. So in the land of Mozambique, the land of the Tongas. Okay? This was captured there. Yes. So, this is actually the short boys that I was talking about. Okay. In some cases, it may look 
similar to a goblin over the year a goblin i don't know actually the description of of a goblin i actually do know it but no i don't know it i can't remember it but i searched for it on google the thing that i paid attention to it's its features basically a short thing that is said to steal the wealth of the rich people similar to the tokoloshi the tokoloshi doesn't only steal the wealth of the people what does it do it rapes torments beats you up tortures and does anything you can imagine basically which is bad there's a story while i was growing up i think it was in grade eight eighth grade there's a story of a tokoloshi raping a man and his wife on daily time very terrible thing very terrible thing so credo muta speaks of this being you understand credo muta speaks of this being he refers to it as an extraterrestrial the features of a goblin having pointy ears having a, a, a head which is like that is similar to the description of the earlier mentioned tokoloshi by credo motwa in credo motwa's description it has a bony ridge you see this bone that i have over here it's ridged basically and it goes further in it is said when you touch that bony ridge you instantly die that's how terrible it was there was a king in the times of lumukanda that they sent this being upon and then it was able to kill the king untraceably with utmost efficiency it wasn't even traced hmm they couldn't even tell what it was because spiritual protections were made basically but then it was able to to pass so now the thing that confuses me is that credo mutua in the book says that this entity isn't actually a spirit it's actually a a physical human being it's true this is why i advise everyone to keep an open mind basically so that you can be able to 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 have a sort of a glimpse and try to make sense of this whole thing basically so being have it that it being have it having a a spirit a physical uh existence it made it easier for for it to actually assassinate the king okay nice so it is further went into the instructions of or the description of how they would create such a, an, an entity such an entity is created i remember seeing it on on someone's facebook post i don't know if i should mention this guy okay let me not mention him but he gave a method on how to create a human human on whatever man that thing you understand so basically you take an egg you hollow it out and then take your semen sperm and then you take the female fluids and then put it inside of the egg and do a certain ritual at a certain time and bury the thing and it will manifest that creature so you would many you would actually create that creature to get you wealth basically guys going deeper into the rebel rabbit hole of african spirituality guys it's not merely burning sage and dancing the whole night to drums and stupid things anyway 
let's let's continue further so the process of creating this entity would be similar to that of creating another entity which is what a zombie okay however this is not a zombie this is a a short entity they say that in this in this book they say that that entity is actually a child basically a child that was mutilated and something was inset a very pointy needle or something was inset through the third eye of the child as a young kid as a young child as an infant sometimes it was inset to it and it, and some of the brain functions of it were modified as a as a result to actually mutilate it into being an entity and not having uh, the sanity of a human being so these are feather grown and then they are grown in cages sometimes which manipulates their height to make them short man you know man hearing about this stuff it's really really painful guys so i'm sorry for mentioning it on the way of dharma guys but i have to show you some other things which i know from african spirituality background basically you understand there's so many things that would shock you that the african does i'm just telling you sometimes yes but let's continue so that's how it would be created basically and then it would further grow into that so i think along the way that mutilation that process whereby they do that thing into the third eye it gives that thing spiritual powers but then it ha it doesn't have the power to think to actually think for itself it can be sent the whole day it's basically a slave basically it doesn't get tired it can send it can be sent to do so many errands and it it, it will obey basically it doesn't have any conscious thought so when such a thing comes to you it may be one because it's fascinated of your energy or two it was sent upon you to actually destroy you I wouldn't like the latter I wouldn't like the latter I wouldn't like the latter so guys that's actually what it is so I don't know in terms of a goblin is a goblin created in that way and my friend further says that some of the entities that I speak about you can actually create it out of a certain tree a special tree you cut off a branch or a, a stick from the tree and then do certain rituals and then it comes into being that entity he says that it's on the same level as elementals as fairies and stuff basically that's what he says but here it is said that it can be created through those means basically so guys you see how much of a thing we are talking about so going back to the snake kingdom there's snakes that have one eye similar like a jewel basically that shines each and every night and lights up the entire place at a mountain in Limpopo, Limpopo, basically. Limpopo. So some people that live there can actually see these snakes with the lights on the head. They light up the entire place. So this is this can be confirmed. And there's some other ones that have different colors basically some others that have b 
big heads and small body some others that have big body and small head so many of them basically so many of them so many of them you understand so many of them so how do they move the snake kingdom like i said in my previous video i think i've mentioned it they can move in the form of lightning they can move in the form of tornado they can move in the form of rain there's clouds that come from val side going this way maybe sometimes it may be a rain passing you know black clouds passing and the rain comes and it might rain for maybe two minutes or even five minutes and then it passes on to another area that's how it moves basically how they move my friend says if you can look deeper into the clouds you can actually see the snakes coiling and moving around now something is being poured into the vaccine to vaccinate us at a young age to actually be blind to these entities because if you don't see that reality you don't ask questions and if you don't ask questions you obey you obey the rules and laws effortlessly and you go back to work you go back to serve someone i fail to understand how can we work for someone when we know of such entities highly unlikely highly unlikely we should be devising ways of coming and petitioning these entities some of you might make pacts with these entities but that's not my advice maybe if i go into deeper research and find out the different types of pacts maybe i can consider that but you can make such pacts and have power ancient kings like i come from the royal family and the royal lineage i have a very very deep feeling that says that my forefathers had some kind of pact with these elemental spirits that's why they went into such high power basically so there's no rulership there's no power without such entities so we are given the vaccine of the covid 19 ja, and we are also given the vaccine at the young age to actually blind us to these realities to make sure that we don't question anything except for what they teach us basically so this knowledge that i'm telling you you know the human has a tendency to fear the unknown you understand it is said in some indian saying that the human would create a society rather than to voyage out into the unknown world they would stay in their society drink alcohol and dance and enjoy life basically because the fear of encountering something that they don't know is much greater and they decide to ignore it and live in ignorance because they don't want to face that thing so they create a sanctuary whereby they can ignore the fact that there's an unknown world out there or ignore the fact of the fear of the of the unknown basically so that's what it is guys i hope you benefit a lot from what i'm sharing with you today yes they pass with snake uh, with weather and they do many things and there's something about these snakes dragons with gold basically there's something about the two wherever there's a mine there's water and where there's water you encounter such beings basically 
so that the, the white people they like to go to the to those places and dig and come out with a lot of wealth basically they come out with a lot of wealth basically while we go into school while we go into university while we are going to work they are basically mining and communicating with these entities because i don't know what what, what to call this guy but he's my father's cousin okay so he's my father's cousin he went deep into the mind sometime in his lifetime and then going down deeper he encountered a being that said that he was the devil basically so he had a conversation with that being when he was deep in the mind he didn't want to tell my father what were, what they were discussing okay i i I think that entity came to him in a, in a way that can be logicalized to him basically so it came and told him that it was the devil okay i don't know if i should believe that there's a devil or rather there is a devil but he's not there in the sense of the christian way so ever since that time my father's cousin is not all right up there I understand so many strange things are happening question this reality where you can see a snake turning into a lightning and going deep into the the clouds basically guys the snake can be sent upon you to destroy you basically ask someone in south africa even when they joke they say that i'll hit you with lightning if you try to take someone's girl they say that i'll hit you with lightning in another joke they say that in limpopo there's shops where you can actually go and purchase lightning to hit someone with lightning if they send that snake upon you if you are not spiritually powerful if you have no protection the lightning will basically yam you it can yam you when there is sunlight there's no sign of rain basically it will yam you going back into how the snakes move it moves through the wind through the rain through the lightning normally it is not advisable to build a shack you know there's there's shacks basically there's people that live in shacks here in south africa <laughs> most of them <laughs> most of them the ones that come here and 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 build okay i, I thought of something that, that 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 was supposed to be a joke basically but it will offend many of you so <laughs> i was gonna say that you know the the old south africans we were in apartheid and it wasn't permissible for for people to actually build shacks so south africans they don't build shacks basically so it's a later day tradition okay so shacks when they come they are shiny when they are new they are shiny so these guys that like to build shacks near the stream it is advised not to do so because when the owner of the place the guardian of the element of the water or the guardian of the site which you are inhabiting when it passes it likes to pass with ease and harmony but now when it encounters a, a reflective thing just like a shack it reflects back light into it and blinds it for a moment okay so it obscures its vision basically so they don't like that where there's a stream so there's a story again a guy told me that an old man near a stream came to the people that were inhabiting the area near it 
okay and he asked them he said this is what he said please don't build shacks around here and please remove the shacks that you have already built here because each and every time when i pass this obscures my vision it blinds me when it shines into my eye basically so please remove these things they didn't listen and then the next time when it passed by the wind blew away the shakes and it damaged their property okay so that's another way of movement when it moves it damages the property but in that case it likes to warn basically there's some good spirit snakes rather let me say this okay there's a demiage energy a false god energy that's trying to fight the righteous god energy the one of evolution and enlightenment and elevation these two forces are fighting okay however the element spirit of good they are rather neutral okay there's some that you can command and actually send upon someone like the case of the lightning there's there's such basically so it's like that in the hierarchy of spirits i think i've discussed with you everything that i wanted to note down and explain to you i hope i'm not straying away far from yoga mantra sadhana and the way of dharma in general this is what i want to share with you so that you know some of the things from africa because not much is talked about in regards to africa so they think maybe we are of of a weak race there's very very powerful things that are not revealed about the africans it is done so by a reason because once these things come to light and then people will start to question and then you know man just like the first musician in america because we couldn't do anything in america we were enslaved basically so the first musician saw a loophole in the system and then all of a sudden there was a creativity directed at creating music in america for being able to actually bypass their slavery you understand so when such questions about the occult arise and such interest about the occult arises and the african practice i fear for the ones that enslave i fear for the damage energy because now our attention will be focused upon finding answers and finding such powers so what will happen as a result peace be unto them and uh war be unto them <laughs> war be unto them so yes guys thank you for paying attention thank you for listening thank you for supporting the way of dharma and uh, i really enjoyed our discussion please like subscribe and share to whoever that you want to share this knowledge with asenest fire om namah shivaya